In 2300, significant technological advancements are changing the world forever. For example, superhuman powers are now possible. By this point, technologies like nanotechnology, room temperature superconductors, anti-gravity, force fields, and programmable matter have exponentially evolved to levels that are unimaginable to people from earlier centuries. Some humans have already uploaded their minds to synthetic bodies that allow them to achieve practical immortality. With the help of the most high-tech synthetic human bodies and synthetic brains, individuals are now capable of having powers that would be considered superhuman and inconceivable by 21st century standards. Depending on what technologies people have access to, they can turn themselves invisible, morph into another person entirely, stretch their limbs to twice their length, and levitate from ground level to the roof of a skyscraper in seconds. They can heal a wounded person just by touching them, read thoughts and emotions, extract recent memories from people's minds, and lift objects weighing thousands of tons. They can see through walls, view individual atoms with the naked eye, use telescopic vision to see distant astronomical objects, hear a whisper from miles away, determine the precise chemical composition of something just by tasting, touching, or smelling it. And they have the capability to constantly observe everything around them because of microscopic cameras distributed throughout their body that can view the entire electromagnetic spectrum. They can sprint at lightning speed, survive after walking on molten lava, never require sleep, and survive indefinitely without food and water because their skin can absorb solar and vibrational energy from the environment around them. Number 2. Humanity is a type 1 civilization on the Kardashev scale. The Kardashev scale is a method of measuring a civilization's level of technological advancement based on the amount of energy it's able to use. A type 1 civilization is able to harness all of the energy on its home planet and harness all of the energy that reaches its home planet from its neighboring star. By 2250, virtually all of the Earth's natural energy was already harnessed or captured. Solar, wind, hydroelectric, and geothermal technologies are being used to create huge amounts of energy using vast amounts of Earth's land, water, and atmosphere. Fusion and antimatter are used to create vast amounts of energy. Additionally, entirely new forms of energy production that were unknown in previous centuries are being utilized. In Earth's orbit, there is now a comprehensive network of energy capturing vessels. These vessels are organized in such a way that they harvest every ounce of incoming solar radiation being reflected back into space from Earth. Each vessel acts as a node within a gigantic web that completely encircles the planet. An invisible shield is formed between the nodes and it absorbs solar radiation from every corner of the globe. Additionally, this invisible shield has the added benefit of stabilizing the Earth's climate. This shield is able to be adjusted at certain points around the Earth to control the amount of heat passing through from the sun. As a result, rain is able to fall wherever and whenever it is needed, while hurricanes and tornadoes can be easily controlled. This vast amount of energy now available to humans is creating enormous wealth, prosperity, and technological advancement. And because of this increased amount of energy, along with state-of-the-art replicator machines, almost all material needs are virtually eliminated. From this point forward, the only way for human civilization to gain more energy is to harvest directly from the sun and expand outward into space. Number 3. Teleportation is now available to the mainstream public. When a person is using a synthetic body comprised of nanobots, they now have the ability to transport to another location that is many miles away without traversing physical space. This is made possible by having teleporter machines at two locations that are wirelessly connected with each other. 
Whenever a teleportation occurs, the physical arrangement of nanobots and consciousness of a person are shared with the receiving teleportation machine. It's also possible to transport other physical objects as well. However, it's considered controversial to transport biological organisms since transporters require the destruction of the original versions of organisms. Number 4. Life has been found on another planet. Because of probes equipped with antimatter propulsion, dozens of neighboring star systems have been explored. After surveying thousands of planets, automated probes discovered a one-celled organism within 100 light years of our solar system. As expected, this life form reproduces using binary fission. Its internal chemical structure is strikingly similar to DNA. This might indicate that this form of life is quite common throughout the universe. The planet that it lives on contains liquid water and its distance from its star makes it habitable for life. Its star system also includes gas giants in the outer regions, which offer protection from incoming comets. Number 5. Humans now live in other solar systems. Thanks to our ability to travel at near the speed of light, interstellar travel is increasing greatly during this time. Settlements on planets of distant star systems are inhabited by thousands of humans and machines by now. Those star systems include Alpha Centauri, which is over 4 light years away, Bernard Star, which is about 6 light years away, and Wolf 359, which is about 8 light years away. Many of the spaceships on these journeys are operated by beings with artificial general intelligence or superintelligence, but a small percentage contain human pilots. These human pilots are typically transhumans who have heavily modified bodies and brains. In fact, their bodies might be entirely synthetic. These humans are much better equipped to cope with long journeys than natural, non-upgraded humans. These transhumans are also much more likely to survive in harsh environments on other planets. Hibernation pods with connections to virtual reality experiences are utilized for trips that last for over several years. When spaceships containing humans arrive at these distant planets, Programmable matter technology is used to construct various types of buildings on those planets relatively quickly. And by this point, the most distant exploratory spacecraft has reached over 50 light years away from Earth. Number 6. Earth is able to be protected from asteroids. Dozens of lasers are being constructed on planets and moons throughout the solar system to stop an asteroid or comet from hitting Earth. In many situations, humans are able to detect a potential collision from an asteroid that is projected to happen months or even years into the future. When the lasers hit those asteroids, they slightly change the trajectory of those asteroids so that they have almost no possibility of hitting Earth. The earlier we can accomplish this after detecting a potential collision, the higher the chances of success. Number 7. The entire solar system is being inhabited by humans. Earth's moon is now the most heavily populated of all the space colonies. It has millions of permanent inhabitants. Mars has declared its independence from Earth. It's heavily populated with cities that are connected with a hyperfast automated rail network. A massive terraforming effort is also underway on both Mars and Venus. The asteroid mining sector now generates the most revenues for humans in the inner solar system. Thousands of asteroids are being mined at a time. Advances in nanotechnology and related fields enable these asteroids to be stripped literally atom by atom so that nothing goes to waste. More than several types of precious metals are harvested for use in high-tech industries. 
the largest asteroids, which are sometimes called minor planets, are being hollowed out and their interiors are converted into enormous power plants, research stations, and settlements for humans. Jupiter is gaining a steady influx of prospectors, comprised mostly of heavily modified transhumans and sentient robots. It's also being siphoned for its vast supply of hydrogen and helium. A number of floating cities and gigantic refineries are beginning to appear in the upper atmosphere of Jupiter as well. Meanwhile, Jupiter's moons are being exploited for their metals, minerals, and ice. The rings of Saturn now have luxurious hotels orbiting around them, offering magnificent views of this massive gas giant. Guests are able to venture outside of these hotels and drift among the slowly moving ice and rock fragments in Saturn's rings. Saturn's largest moon, Titan, is now home to entire cities. Enceladus is another moon of Saturn, which contains an ocean of liquid salt water under its icy crust. It has great potential to serve as a water source for human civilizations in the outer solar system. Even the distant planets of Uranus and Neptune have gas miners now, and developments there are expected to dramatically increase over the next decades and centuries. Pluto and the Kuiper Belt are being exploited for minerals and ice as well. The Kuiper Belt is a region of the solar system beyond the orbit of Neptune, which contains over a trillion comets, asteroids, and other small objects made largely of ice. Lastly, much of the solar system is being turned into smart rocks with neural networks embedded throughout asteroids and on the surface of moons. This is allowing powerful artificial intelligences to handle large-scale scientific experiments and automated mining operations. Number 8. Moore's Law is reaching its physical limit. Today, a computing device with a weight of 2 to 3 pounds is able to perform calculations that are over 40 orders of magnitude greater than the best supercomputer two centuries earlier. That is because computer substrates are now reaching the highest density and efficiency allowed by the laws of physics. Artificial superintelligences made this possible by creating subatomic matrices at incredibly tiny scales. Diamond-like materials are now being incorporated and they're able to encode information at over several orders of magnitude smaller than nanotechnology. One of the major issues that prevented this level of computational power in the past was heat management. Generating this level of computational power used to produce heat that was equivalent to a thermonuclear explosion in the early 2000s. However, new developments in physics eventually solved this challenge as well as others. Number 9. Earth's Ecosystems Are Being Repaired Human activity over the last couple of centuries led to catastrophic damage to natural habitats on Earth. During that time, half of the known species on Earth went extinct as a result of pollution, climate change, deforestation, mining, the construction of new cities, and more. Various wars, nuclear attacks, industrial accidents, and nanotechnology experiments also played a part in exterminating life in large parts of the world. However, by the early 2200s, it became possible to recreate those extinct animals and plants and bring them back to life. This involved using a combination of fossil records, DNA samples, computer models, and molecular engineering. Once these life forms were grown or reproduced in sufficient numbers, they were distributed back to their original native environments. They're now living as close as possible to how they lived prior to human interference. There are now strict laws prohibiting any harm to come to them as well. Additionally, entire deserts have been transformed back into forest with the use of artificial rain and other forms of weather control. Toxic lakes and rivers are being cleaned and oceans are being deacidified, cooled, and made habitable once again for countless sea life. And many decades ago, 
Android zoos entirely replaced biological zoos as part of an effort to treat biological animals more humanely. Thanks for watching. Make sure to watch this next video in this video series.